Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio, my new home studio. I'm still in the process of doing everything here. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while. I've had this guitar for, let's say, coming up on a year, probably. I'm uncertain whether I love it or loathe it. Uh, I bought it to do a video about, and I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it or not. I'm not. It could be yours. Uh, details below. Taylor have tried to do that most difficult and dangerous of things, innovate. This model was released about 11 years ago now, and it doesn't exist anymore. And that is a pity because there are some incredibly cool things on here. And that's what we're going to look at today. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> This is the Taylor Solid Body, which is a misnomer, I think. We're going to take it apart and have a look. Standard, because it's just got dots and not pretty inlays, etc. And a, a standard, very attractive uh, flame maple top. I'm a fan of Bob Taylor's work. I'm a fan of the sheer immense quality that we've got here. The build quality is impeccable. The fretwork is, well, very chunky frets, but it's an electric guitar, isn't it? It doesn't quite gel for me. And I think that's because of the construction of the body. I have spent the last 20 years just immersed in my own builds, and that is not the best way. I've got hundreds of books on guitars uh, by other makers, but I haven't had one-on-one -on -one intimate time with them. That is changing. I am buying as many interesting guitars as I can uh, across the price ranges from uh, 60s Ibanez is worth basically nothing to high-end Les Pauls and Taylors and things like that. I am going to buy them, experience them, look at them, take them apart and see how they tick and what made them. And then, in most cases, I'm going to raffle them off and you guys can have them and I can use the uh, use the money and hopefully the profit made from that to buy the next guitar and keep them coming. On top of that, from the point of view of a guitar building channel, we are then going to be able to uh, provide plans and measurements and uh, all of those interesting things about all these strange guitars that most people don't think about and don't care about for one, but also we'll be able to take the inspiration and also record for posterity. I'm going to be photographing all of the more interesting instruments and hell, maybe we'll put a book together at some point. Either way, this guitar, this guitar is truly, truly interesting. We've got the standard, very pretty Taylor headstock. I love the, uh, the truss rod cover and I think it's just got a single action truss rod in there. The, the whole neck, the shape of the neck, the width of the nut, feels like an acoustic. I haven't measured it yet, but that's the impression I get. This bridge, this bridge is, it's incredible. I really, really like this bridge. And they made a tremolo version of it as well. That does not sound like a guitar to me. It sounds like, it sounds like a cardboard box. The back's solid. I like the way the Sapiri has got the same angle going into each other. It's not perfectly book matched, but it looks very cool. Nonetheless. And here's the reason I bought this guitar. A single bolt. It feels like a set neck. Now here's something else that we must say. This instrument is not for sale. Let's measure this nut, shall we? So we have a 43 and a half millimeter nut. I want to take this guitar apart. I want to get the neck out so we can look at the neck joint. There's very nice comfort calves everywhere you go. That, I really like that.
Look at that. So it's, it's, it's going to be Imperial, but it's essentially eight millimeters or so. So whatever that is. Chunky. Chunky indeed. Okay, now, a draw bore pin is a very, very old woodworking technique where you create a mortise and tenon. Before you stick them together, you drill a hole through uh, from either uh, where the tenon is going to go. Then you put the, the, the tenon in and mark the center of the hole. Take that out, then drill slightly offset that way so that when you chuck a, 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 a dowel through, instead of having three holes lined up perfectly, you've got one hole, one slightly offset that's going to pull it in and tighten the whole thing as it goes through. And essentially the, the bit of wood will twist but add mechanical strength pulling in. This is exactly what Bob Taylor has done here. It's incredible and this is exactly why I am now looking at other people's guitars. He's gone and looked at a, a 200, 300 year old furniture making technique and thought, hmm, I could do that with guitar building. So my hole is centered, but the countersink is off center. And as that goes in, it'll be pulling one way or the other. And there we go. So we've got two CNC locating pins, serial number 2007 1023. <laughs> That's interesting. Essentially, it is a, a wedge shape laser cut out. Uh, cross grain, which is interesting. I don't suppose it makes any difference, really. Taylor will send you different different ones depending on, on uh, what you want to do action wise, etc. But that's not the only thing we're looking at here. You can see where the top has been inlaid and it goes down there. So the top is only is very, very thin. I'm going to say under three millimeters. The binding goes all the way around, which is very cool. Uh, the flame is very, very, very thin, and that's fine. What I'm really surprised about, though, is that you've got a large section of the back of this neck here is routed out, so there's no actual contact. I mean, a, a significant percentage of this neck has zero contact with the body. Uh, you've added an extra sort of bit in here. From a from an acoustic point of view, this guitar is it's not bad at all. It sustains, it rings out, it plays. It sounds as one would expect a guitar to sound. So so maybe we don't have to be quite so anal about neck pocket joints. I don't know. A lot of guitar builders are very uppity about materials and in reality it doesn't matter as much as we would like to think. I've long thought about taking a, a Bibinga body, hollowing it the hell out, and then filling it with um, that expanding polyurethane foam, for example, to solidify everything. I don't like that. Really don't like that. These pickups around look very cool and they're solid metal, although, again, I don't like the fact that they're both the same height. We've got a fairly high uh, brake angle here and you're looking at the side of a, of a pickup and it's just not ideal in, in, in my opinion. So it wouldn't surprise me if these are chromed aluminium, maybe brass. Well, look at that. Where did she come from? You can see where the plywood is and that's fine. That was as expected. And we can see solid sapili under that. I'm trying to save these strings. They're relatively new on. There's no point in being wasteful. So this must have been just them experimenting with different types of pickups or maybe an option. I like how precise this hole is. So they've got very long screws here and they've just drilled with a CNC hole right underneath it uh, for the screw to go in. A big route for the, uh, uh, the cables to go through, but uh, 
just a drill. Nice. So the bridge is beautiful. It's really attractive. It is made out of aluminium. So it's, it's, it's heavily chromed aluminium. It's used on a lot of electric guitar parts, but generally cheap or mass produced. Uh, um, modern hardware, you don't tend to use aluminium, you use brass or, or steel, really. Is this another one of those things that uh, I think aluminium is not as good because I've been told that aluminium is not good and it's like the whole placebo thing. Uh, the only issue I've got with this guitar is because of the plywood and it's not because it is plywood, it's, it's so thin that it just feels weird and it doesn't feel like a guitar should. Am I narrow-minded? Let me know in the comments. Okay. Woohoo. On a normal guitar, you have a tunomatic or a hardtail or something, and uh, or even uh, say a six-point tremolo system, and it's a six-point tremolo system because the, you want as much contact as humanly possible between the bridge and the body. Now, the the body is solid underneath this bridge, which is fine, which is good, which is correct, but it's been routed all the way through because all of the adjustment is from the back. That's both genius and somewhat questionable. This is a, a fixed bridge that sounds a little bit like a tremolo system because well, it's got another tone chamber, doesn't it? But uh, let's see. That fits nicely. Oh, wow, okay. I hope that we were gonna have a really big, uh, chunky system going right to the back of the guitar. Um, it's not that at all. It's a, uh, yeah, it's not that at all. Excuse me. Yeah, smells nice. It, doesn't appear that it's ever been opened since manufacturing, basically. It smells like a fresh cut <laughs> chunk of wood. And I'm fully aware how weird I am. Okay, I'm taking these off. I need to concentrate. Isotunes, Crimson 10. I've purposefully left this to open on camera so that I can get my impressions. And I think I know why, or another reason why this guitar has not done very well. When you have anxiety, when I as a luthier have anxiety over how to adjust something, um, that doesn't bode well. It, sure, it's gonna be super easy and I just need to figure it out. Essentially what we've got is your, your strings go in, uh, they're top mounted into these sexy and very comfortable saddles. The intonation is absolutely locked and there is nothing is gonna move. You release that in the back here somehow. I thought it would be just a case of uh, individual Allen keys locking off each saddle underneath. I thought it was gonna be simple and straightforward. We've got uh, these two giant bolts. They look like not lock nuts, but they've got Allen key uh, grub screws going from that side. I'm not sure what those are in there, probably more Allen keys. What are those holes for? One, two, three, four, there's only five of them. Let's see, maybe these are locking off the pairs, maybe releasing those releases all six saddles to then adjust. Um, I don't like it. Adjusting intonation, Taylor, electric guitar. It's a full page thing on Taylor's website. Let's have a look. Things you'll need, a three eighths or 10 millimeter, a socket or nut driver, 332nd Allen wrench, uh, 0.5 millimeter Allen wrench, intonation set screws, the action height, intonation, 1 16th inch Allen wrench, and none of this is in the case. Oh, I'm going to have to take this whole bridge apart. I don't want to take this whole bridge apart. I'm not going to take this whole bridge apart. I can't, I'm not. Fine, I'm going to take the whole bridge apart. Two, three, four, five, and there's one underneath that. So there are actually six. Those have little screws with nylon tips that 
push up against the, ba the, the underneath of the saddles and lock them in place so they can't move forward or backwards. Uh, your intonation is actually set uh, from a, a grub screw in the back of each of the saddles. These two things here are uh, lock nuts essentially. Uh, if you want to raise the action, you have to release these two things and then adjust in here. So that's your bass side, that's your treble side, and this one is just to apparently stabilize things. I can't believe that I need to remove an entire nut just to gain access to a hole to lock off one of the saddles. That seems incredibly short-sighted. Anyway, let's take this bridge out, shall we? So it's just a standard nylock nut. Aha! So there's a tiny little ground wire there, and that's the really cool looking. This is the bezel, that's incredible. Here are our height adjustment grub screws, and there, there is no grub screw there. We found a free grub screw underneath one of the pickups. This is hilarious. There is. There's a chamber here where the earth is going into the uh, into the control cavity. I'm going to assume that there are similar chambers going from the control cavity to the pickups all the way from here into here and then somehow through into here. The incredible journey of the humble little grub screw. There are so many things on a guitar that can rattle away and just cause issues. Um, like when one's filming a YouTube video and your dogs go insane. I love how each saddle is dovetailed into a, into a slot there. That's really cool. There's a lot of contact between each saddle and the bridge plate. These are ones here. They're nylon tipped locking grub screws. They go underneath the saddle and push it up and lock it in place. Here on the bottom right hand corner of each saddle, you've got your forward and back uh, adjustment with, with a grub screw. There's no spring or anything like that. Apparently that is not required. The bridge just fits in place. It's super comfortable. Will this just pop up? There we go. There's loose sawdust just sitting there. It hasn't been compressed. It hasn't been smushed into the top. I think the cavity is a little bit deeper than the base of the bridge. So literally the entire, all of the contact that we've got on this instrument uh, the, the bridge is these areas, the lip here. I don't know, I don't like it. I don't... This whole system is divorced from this system by just three contact points. Uh, and that's your height adjustment, so you've got... <laughs> yeah. This whole plate is bolted down to the wood. So in a roundabout way, I suppose you do have full contact with the, uh, with the body. So everything I just said was, uh, should be taken with a pinch of salt, my friends. Okay, that's the loose one. Let's lock that off. Our height hasn't changed. Let's see what's going on in here. There is something special. Ooh-hoo. What we've got. That's a fairly cool looking switch. You've got a fuse there. And uh, yeah, in, in, in the UK, it's not really an issue because we have particularly good health and safety. Uh, but uh, there are places where you can get electrocuted by faulty ground in a building or something like that. Uh, so if you touch the strings in your guitar and uh, there's a faulty ground and it comes up through the microphone and, and you can die. And that little fuse apparently stops that. So that's that's quite cool. It's another one of these things that they've just added in that's pretty cool. The switch is on a metal plate and it looks like MDF from inside. It really does. Uh, I've never needed a torch in here and I find that I do though, so. Hmm. It's, it's better quality than 
than MDF. It's relatively uh, compact, I suppose, but it is that's what it is. Essentially, this is a modern Dan Electra. The cavity is absolutely, it's hollow all the way around, maybe even further. And uh, yeah, we've got a particle board guitar. That surprises me. There's no shielding paint inside. Assuming that there's some clever reason why not. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm going to squirt a, a little bit of switch cleaner in. All right, so we've got flame maple top, something going that way and something underneath it. It looks like particle board to me. Yep, that's that. It's sort of MDF and that confirms it goes the whole way. The other interesting thing is, I think that they've finished this whole thing and then routed these pockets out. I noticed this on the, uh, on the bridge as well. It's a very clean, very clean line. There's no overspray. And you can actually see permanent marker on the top of the body on both sides of it. And same thing here and here. If you look at that cut there, they've gone after the finishing, after the spraying and routed this out. That's some pretty ballsy CNC work, I must say. Okay, so these frets are, I'm sure, perfectly flat, and we'll double check that, but not shiny enough. It's been a while. I'm going to, I'm just gonna use a fret rubber actually and buff them up and uh, fix that. There you go, quarter inch. There we go, okay. Yeah. The frets aren't perfect. I assumed much. They're all over the place. Uh, now this has been, this is an old, older guitar, but it doesn't look like it's been played very much. Uh, anyway, look, you've all seen me uh, level crown and polish things a million times. Uh, I'm going to quickly beast through this and uh, that's that. So I've used the nostrate edge to, to check that the fretboard itself, the neck itself is perfectly straight. Fret rocket to check and at this point, Permanent marker. Permanent marker. Ooh Hopefully I don't have to take off too much. After this, it's a leveling beam, then we crown, then we polish, and uh, we get to put the guitar back together. Not much pressure at all. I don't want to move the neck by pushing too hard. There we go. We now have level frets. So I'm following the radius of the fretboard, but I'm not moving the triangular file that way. I want to create flat edges with a, a nice three quarters of a millimeter flat on the top. And then when I do the rounding over, that's when, or the, the polishing, etc. that's when you're going to round that over a little bit. 
By the way, all of these tools, the crimson tools, uh, leveling files, notch straight edges, all of that sort of stuff. If you're currently watching this, uh, what is it, August 2022, really is. It's 2022, people. Um, major sale, crimsonguitars.com, the entire, everything that we do, uh, apart from probably the three month guitar building course, is currently on sale. And uh, on top of that, uh, we've got free shipping in the UK and subsidized shipping for the rest of the world. So uh, we've capped the shipping for everywhere in the world, no matter how heavy the thing is that you order from us, uh, it'll be no more than 20 quid to ship to you. Because I care. Let's get some mm, 600 grit wet and dry paper, start with that. Then I'm going to go through the fret rubbers, coarse, medium, fine, super fine. And then finally, it's dinner time. Maybe I'll finish this tomorrow, we'll see. So I'm on the super fine fret rubber and I use that to clean the fretboard as well. It's very lightly abrasive, but uh, not very much at all. Okay, well, <laughs> using the bench grinder with a buffing wheel and polishing compound is not absolutely necessary, but it does give the best and quickest results, or at least the best results the quickest way. Super shiny. Fretboard and finish cleaner. So get rid of the last of the uh, polishing compound and anything else in there. Okay, uh, this is a an old, old bottle of the uh, fretboard restorative. Same stuff, just new, new packaging. It rejuvenates the fretboard. Nice. That is a really cool system, I must say. All fun and games. Let's get her strung up again and uh, see what we got. <sighs> of course, it's all tangled and a nasty mess.
So here we are. I mean, it's. It does what it should. The fact that we've got a bridge that is made out of multiple pieces and isn't necessarily all that much in contact with the top. The fact that it's made out of a strange mixture of um, natural wood veneers and essentially a uh, melamine MDF kind of thing on the top. The fact that it's got just a single bolt in the neck and it's not a set neck, it, it, you know, the set neck versus bolt on thing isn't an issue to me. All of these things mean nothing. And if you didn't know about any of that, you would just say, hey, this is a, this is a guitar with good natural sustain. Uh, it feels better. The frets are nice and shiny and, and, and smooth, uh, better than it was when it first came. It's a really nice guitar. What do you think? What do you think? We've got a very cool looking complicated bridge. We've got a very comfortable uh, back carve. It's got that curve. The neck is the killer for me. It feels much more like an acoustic guitar than a solid body. And this was marketed as a solid body. I think that was a bad idea. I think everything else on here is pretty much a good idea. I love how they routed out through the, the, through the finish to speed up the production of that. That means I've got some very, very talented um, uh, CAD drawers and things like that. I, I, the, the electronics is, are great. It sounds good and I'll plug it in in a second. Uh, we've got a comfort carve on the back there. We've got a forearm, comfort, a forearm carve here, which is great. The top is inlaid into the body, which is a very cool technique. And from a manufacturing point of view, it's, it's veneer rather than solid woods. It's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper to manufacture. All right, and this is the final, final little bit of craziness. This guitar essentially has three humbuckers. So we've got twin humbuckers, but a five-way switch. And uh, so this is the neck. I should probably tune this again. Dag Mamet. Hold that thought. Neck position. And bridge position. Okay, that's all cool. Now with the five-way switch, turn all the way on. In the second position, you've got the inside coils of both humbuckers, fairly in, in parallel. So it's a fairly sort of funky kind of a kind of a tone. Middle, you've got the whole neck pickup and one of the coils of the bridge. And then in the fourth position, this is an interesting one, you've got both inside coils of the humbucker giving you, and they're in, in series, and therefore that is creating a humbucker that's about that bloody wide. Quite a cool sound. And then just bridge. And the finger picking, so. This is a very cool sounding guitar. I am. Not surprised that it was not a commercial success. It's innovative. It's interesting. There are very many cool things going on. They've gone for an electric market with an acoustic kind of a thing and the neck is just too big. The range of tones is incredible and this whole thing was designed based on the fact that uh, uh, one of Taylor's guys you know, got good at making 
electric guitar pickups. The bridge is cool, and I understand where they came up with it. They wanted to do something different um, that looks more attractive and feels, and it does, it feels amazing. Super solid, it's super locked in, a little bit complicated. It's fine, it's cool. It feels to me like somebody went and threw every single idea they'd ever, ever had at a particular project. And that's not a bad thing. I do that on a regular basis. I like this guitar as a guitar, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an idea. Personally, I don't like it as a player. And this is one of the reasons why, yeah, it could be yours. Check the link in the description below. This instrument could be yours. And uh, well, it's never played as, as good as it does now after doing an unexpected fret job. Please click like, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you want to keep on seeing uh, content like this. Uh, I am very much enjoying uh, the idea of going in and, and experimenting with other people's guitars and seeing what they've done. And uh, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to find a more interesting guitar than this one. I appreciate your support, everybody. Have, have a good week. Goodbye. Bloody nice case as well.